Hello, and welcome back to another Daily Top 10's Top 10 video. When we stare up into the night sky, we're sure we've all wondered about what is out there. How far away is that star? Is that one bigger than our sun? And is that a UFO, or is my neighbor using his drone to spy on me again? When you read that we've found a planet orbiting a distant star, have you ever thought, how the hell do they find these? You sometimes hear in the news that we've discovered a potentially habitable planet, but what are we basing this on? Do you just keep zooming in until you have your very own Google Krypton? So given that we have about three weeks before Earth collapses under its own self-loathing, it's about time we all found out the top 10 ways to find a new planet. You're all welcome to join us here on the planet of the daily top 10s. We have plenty of food and basically no laws, so just click subscribe to book your place. Number 10, the old fashioned way. Within our solar system, there are only three planets which were what you could call discovered, since most of them are visible to the naked eye. But once we did away with the eye's nudity, William Herschel used a telescope to spot Uranus in 1781, Neptune followed in 1846, and it wasn't until 1930 that we confirmed the existence of Pluto, even though we have since relegated it back to being just a common rock. The first planet outside our solar system was found in 1992 and was named incredibly sexily, PSR B1257 plus 12A. I mean, they could have gone with one or planet A, but you know, we're sure they had a good reason. To be fair, it was given the name Lich in 2015, presumably to save on column width. Number nine, modern telescopes. It's possible, although extremely rare, to actually observe a planet in the traditional sense with a modern observatory telescope, meaning you look at an image and see a little object and go, look mum, a planet. There are cases where we've done this, such as around the star HR8799, but it's very uncommon. Everything is just too far away, so it's not like we're getting giant HD photos of other systems. It's more like an 8-bit load screen. The other big factor is our atmosphere. Air is great and all, what with the breathing and sustaining life, but it's a real pain when it comes to space photography, since it disperses a lot of the light from other stars, making the images much less clear. Number eight, astronomy. Thanks to gravity, the planets orbit the sun, but that idea you're told in school that the sun sits in the middle and we all spin around it? Well, that's not exactly true. Our solar system has a center and the sun also orbits around it. It's just very close to the center, about the distance of its own diameter, in fact. Just like the sun pulls at the planets, they also pull at the sun. So astronomy is where you watch a star for some time and see how much it wobbles in position. Right now, our cameras are not really good enough to do this. But as technology improves, this method will get much easier. Number seven, Gaia. The European Space Agency has launched a telescope called Gaia, which will operate outside our atmosphere and give far better images. We use an idea called parallax to calculate position, which is just taking an image of a star at one point of the year and another later, then using simple trigonometry to work out its position. Thanks to the blurring of our atmosphere, we're limited to very close stars, but Gaia will let us see most of our galaxy. Number six, spectroscopy. Spectroscopy relies on the Doppler effect. To put it simply, waves that come from an object moving towards you have their peaks squashed together, but the peaks are stretched when it's moving away. You can hear this difference when a car comes towards you, passes, and then moves away. So when stars are moving away, the light waves stretch and become redder, 
when they're coming towards us, it's squashed up, so they're bluer. We simply watch for a pattern in this color change. Even though it's very small, we can work out the star's wobble and therefore what planets are orbiting it. So spectroscopy studies a star's color and allows us to see these changes. Number five, photometry. This is where you study a star for how bright it is. You don't even need the color, which is great news for any dog astronomers. If you notice a regular dip in the brightness of a star, then this shows that either it's trying to save on its electricity bill, or some large object is regularly passing in front of it and blocking out some of the light. The only thing big enough to do this would be a planet or Optimus Prime's dad. Number four, transiting planets. Finding planets is one thing, but finding livable planets, well, that's a whole different ball game. We need to know about the atmosphere, the pressure, the temperature, and the cost of a beer. Well, fortunately, we can work all this out if there are transiting planets, meaning planets which pass in front of the star, like when the moon eclipses the sun. In these cases, we can work out the size and mass pretty easily. Then, by turning to spectroscopy again, we look for changes in color when the planet transits. The colors tell us a lot about the planet, like temperature, pressure, atmosphere, and water content. It's just like how when you see a man with a light purple shirt and a dark purple tie, you know immediately that he's an estate agent and that you hate him. Number three, check with the neighbors. Using the data we already have, statistical analysis suggests that there are tens of billions of potentially habitable planets in our galaxy alone. And in 2016, observations from Chile found a planet going around our nearest star, Proxima Centauri, just four light years away. Proxima b, as it's called, is 1.3 times the size of Earth and could be cool enough to have liquid water. Proxima Centauri is a red dwarf, so it's much cooler than our sun, but the planet also orbits much closer, so the temperature balances out. In fact, a year on Proxima b is just 11 days, so you barely have time to get over your hangover before the next party starts. Number two, probes. If we can't get the information we need through telescopes, then we'll have to send someone over to have a look. Humans, sadly, live pathetically short lives in galactic terms. So for now, we'll have to send probes out and see what data they can collect. There are four probes that are on an interstellar trip, meaning they will leave our galaxy. Pioneer 10 and 11 and Voyager 1 and 2. But in 2016, a new project was proposed called Starship where a thousand single-gram probes would be fired at one-fifth of light speed towards Proxima Centauri. Number one, space drives. All this exploration is kind of pointless unless we can actually get to these planets one day. So unless we all get out and push, we're going to need to find a way to propel ourselves across the inky blackness. Most of the proposals rely on the fact that space isn't quite as empty as it appears. One hypothetical drive is called the Bassard Ramjet. It has a field that gathers all the floating hydrogen atoms that are spread through space and then uses them as fuel for nuclear fusion. The field is a thousand kilometers wide though, so good luck with the parking when you finally arrive somewhere. Thanks for watching another Daily Top 10's Top 10 video. And remember, it's our duty to entertain and yours to subscribe. Did you enjoy that Top 10 video? Then what do you need to do? Exactly, you need to show some uh, respect and hit that subscribe button. Yeah, go down there, hit the subscribe button. Hit it, otherwise I'm gonna have to hit you. I am gonna have to do it, I know I am. And you don't want that. I want it, but you don't want it. And uh, hey, if you happen to be in the market for a hitman, go ahead and leave a comment. Maybe we can, uh, you know, hook up. Uh, yeah, uh, that's maybe the wrong word in this day and age. 
connect. Yeah, we can connect. And uh, you can give me some moolah, and uh, I can go, uh, you know, deal out some violence to someone you don't like. Or someone you do like. Hey, it's your money and uh, my time. I don't really care how you have me spend it. Alright? I'll uh, see you around.